Let's look at one or two more specific examples of subspaces, including one that we'll come back to a few times during this semester, the polynomial space P sub n. We have seen that this um, set of continuous functions on R is a vector space because it is a subspace of the space of all functions. Let's now look at P sub N. This will be the set of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to n, including the constant function p of x equals zero. Um, this is a polynomial. Some textbooks would say that this polynomial doesn't have a degree. If it doesn't have a degree, its degree can't be less than or equal to n. So we're not worrying about that. We are explicitly defining this set to include this polynomial, whether you think it has a degree or not. Well, P sub n is a subset of C zero. This is standard notation. It's a little different from the notation of the previous video. Um, polynomials certainly are continuous functions. As for the conditions, well, condition one is certainly satisfied. We are explicitly including the zero vector. So it's definitely in there. It's closed under scalar multiplication. A constant times a polynomial certainly is a polynomial, and multiplication by a constant can't increase the degree. So if the degree was less than or equal to n originally, and you multiply by k, then the degree is still less than or equal to n. In fact, the only way multiplication by k can change the degree is if k is zero. But if k is zero, we have the zero polynomial, and that's in there. Similarly, Adding two polynomials cannot increase their degree. Cannot increase their degree. It could decrease it um, if the leading terms cancel out, but it cannot increase it. So if we have two polynomials of degree less than or equal to n, and we add them together, the degree of the sum is still less than or equal to n. These three conditions make P sub n, a vector space. 
Let's look at two more examples. We're not going to come back to these the way we're going to come back to this. So we'll run through them a little quicker. Let's look at the vector space R3. And let's look at the vectors in R3 that are zero in the second and third coordinate. This is a subspace. Certainly zero is there. Just that W1 equals zero, and you get the zero vector. It is closed under scalar multiplication. Whatever K is, it's not going to turn these zeros into non-zero numbers. And it's closed under addition. If you have two vectors in this set, and you add them up, the result is still in this set. Our last example will be another function example, and it will actually be kind of similar to that. Let's look at the set of continuous functions from R to R supported on D, where D is some set. And what this means is that if X is not in D, f of x equals zero. So if d is this interval, let's say, the function is defined everywhere, but outside of d, it's always zero. It's only in this interval that the function can be non-zero. This is a subset of the vector space of all continuous functions, and it's a subspace of that vector space. Certainly the zero function is here. Um, I say that if X isn't in D, then F of X is zero, but F of X is allowed to be zero in D as well. So the zero function is here. If we take a function in D and we multiply it by K, that will scale the function and the product will still be in D, zero times K is zero. And if we have functions in D and we add them, well, if two functions are in D, they're both are in this, sorry, a function isn't in D, D is a set of real numbers. 
if two functions are here, they're zero outside of D. Zero plus zero is zero. So their sums are zero outside of D. We could give examples of subspaces until we're sick of it, but I hope these three examples in this video, plus the two examples in the previous video, plus the one example in the video before that, um, are sufficient.